What's going on you guys? TBR here back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Dictator himself, M. Bison, and running him through his paces in PvE content in order to give our first impressions, just our knee-jerk reactions after 24 hours of being able to play around with him. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this character, but he has some major problems, and we will talk about that in today's video. I'm also going to show you guys plenty of footage of this character in action, so that way you can kind of make an informed decision on whether or not you want to pick him up yourselves. But before we go ahead and get into all of that, make sure if you guys haven't already done so, you smash that like button and subscribe. Without further ado, cue the intro. Alright you guys, so as always, timestamps will be available in the description, and the chapter functionality will be available on this video, so that way you can jump to whatever section of the video is most pertinent to you. But with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about M. Bison. Now when it comes to M. Bison, I'm sure you guys have already heard a lot of people talking about this character. In particular, it seems like there's a lot of people out there that are upset about the fact that this character isn't putting up as much damage as characters such as Akuma, Ryu, Luke, etc. However, there are going to be some caveats to that argument. However, I do agree with it. It is one of those situations where on paper this character just is not doing as much damage as those characters. However, there are going to be certain things that this character does have that do set him apart, and even when it comes to the damage, really I feel like a lot of players coming into this game right now are extremely spoiled on damage because we had seen a lot of people come in with the Street Fighter V collaboration. They're seeing the numbers that characters that I just mentioned are putting up, and they see a character like M. Bison who's putting up less damage than those, and they consider him to be in some way, shape, or form bad as a result. And that is definitely not the case. This is not a bad character at all. If this character would have come out two months ago, we would have been singing his praises and talking about how ridiculous he is. But that just is the case when it comes to power creep at the end of the day. But when it comes to Bison, like I said, he does have certain perks that other characters don't. There is definitely a trade-off to him not having as high of damage. And I think that even when it comes to the damage part, it's a little bit overblown, and I think you'll see a lot of that in today's footage. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about the character. Now when it comes to M. Bison here, a couple things I do want to point out. Now, when it comes to the generic cores up here, basically the 30% power charge rate is leading the pack here as being the big standout. The rest of this stuff, while nice, isn't anything too crazy to talk about. However, the big point when it comes to the cores is always the exclusive cores, so let's break those down. When it comes to Psycho Power, this increases active skill damage by 320% to targets affected by darkness on a cooldown of 5 seconds. So this is a really nice upward momentum for his damage on a short cooldown. Pretty nice stuff overall. And then it is followed up with a 30% chance to apply fear to attacker for 3 seconds when attacked on a cooldown of 13 seconds. This is also pretty nice, however, it doesn't necessarily apply itself to every game mode, because not every boss in the game is going to be affected by fear, so that is something to keep in mind, particularly when it comes to things such as Guild Raid. Now, on Shadow Lose Leader, we have a 40% chance to reset our active skill cooldowns upon attacking targets affected by darkness, guard included, on a cooldown of 15 seconds. This here is extremely powerful for him, considering the fact that he is able to spam his skills pretty well thanks to it. Now in general, this is a pretty decent overall set of cores, but you will notice by comparison to some of his peers, these are definitely nowhere near as stacked or broken, and I do feel like that is a large part of where this character is kind of falling short for some people, because these cores don't include certain things like we like to find on a lot of these top tier uber characters. But at the same time, this character is going to be performing extremely well. And again, you guys will see that in the footage. But I do say that the overall cores do leave a little bit to be desired. Not bad, but eh, they're not the greatest. Now, when it comes to his skills, on the S1, we are going to have this guy here. Now, this is basically just going to be his interrupt with hyper armor. Not much to talk about there. It does increase our attack by 70% as well for five seconds, so you'll love to see it. Good little overall skill, and this thing is lightning fast. 
So this character in general is probably the most fun character from this collaboration in my opinion so far that I've played with, just because his animations and his skills are really easy to pick up for a lot of players out there. I think if you're a new player that's just cutting their teeth and you get this guy, you're going to probably have a ton of fun with him, mainly because he is extremely forgiving because of his animations, and this is a really easy character to kind of pick up and play. Now on the S2 here, this is where things start to get interesting. This is going to increase our attack by 70% for 5 seconds. So we have a 70% increase to our attack on the S2, and then again on the S1 we also have a 70% increase. Really, really nice. So this is where his damage does start to ramp a bit. Now he also is going to be able to apply blackout to the target for 7 seconds upon landing a skill, guard included, so really nice stuff there. That's where his dots start to kick in. And then speaking of dots, if we go over here to the S3, this is going to increase the target's damage received by 45% for 5 seconds upon landing a skill, and applies Venom on the target for 9 seconds upon landing a skill, which is extremely important. We'll talk about that momentarily. And then he has a 70% chance to remove the target's hyper armor or shield. Not really something that comes into play that often in PvE, but when it does, it is definitely welcome. So that is going to be the regular old skills there. Now, being that he does have a mixed dot coverage with darkness and poison, this is of course going to be something that is very nice for him for guild raid as far as flexibility goes. Particularly nice to see poison on here because you don't see a ton of top tier poison characters and he's definitely going to be one of those. Now, when it comes to anything else here, we do need to talk about the finishers. So on the core finisher, this is really cool. So on his core finisher, which sucks, by the way, and we'll talk about, I shouldn't say it sucks, it has a lot of problems. It's definitely not one of the best core finishers in the game, we'll put it that way. This is probably one of the bigger subjects of contention I have with this character, though. Uh, he inflicts darkness damage equal to 35% of attack to all enemies every one second for 10 seconds. So that is another really nice way to help you when it comes to your darkness damage and things such as expert difficulty against Omega Rugal. However, at this point, expert difficulty against Omega Rugal really isn't that big of a deal, but it is worth noting. And then on his regular old 3PG card finisher here, we can go ahead and take a look. He is also going to have an effect here that is really important to know. He recovers HP by 8% when using it. Now, this is something that is really going to be beneficial for him and you guys are going to notice is extremely clutch in things such as Inferno and Lunatic. This is going to help him a ton when it comes to his survivability. Being a defensive type natively, this is going to be a character that's going to be, again, more tanky than your Ryus, your Akumas, your Lukes, and so on, where the biggest subject of contention with them is going to be the fact that they don't necessarily have a PvE shield, and therefore aren't necessarily going to have the best survivability in the world. This is really what starts to set him apart. In my opinion, he trades in a lot of his damage for just overall survivability and tankiness to make himself a little bit more balanced. And I do feel like that is kind of where this character's at. Again, when you guys see the footage, this is a character that two months ago everybody would have been up in arms about and would have been loving. So I think that when it comes to the damage numbers, at the end of the day people get really spoiled. You only need so much damage to one key, especially considering the fact that this character is going into things such as Inferno and doing like upwards of 4.5 billion damage solo in things such as Inferno. It's really not bad when you consider the fact that Inferno is the toughest difficulty of Guild Raid. So again, I feel like it's overblown, but it is warranted as well to point out the fact that yes, he does do less damage. Now, that is pretty much what he's got as far as those effects go. Now, let's talk about my build, right? So this is the card set and the card build that I've been using on him. Being that he is an SS fighter, this is going to be a character that is going to be able to take advantage of certain things that some of these other characters can't as well. So when you take a look at my overall build here, you're going to see that I am using things that are specific to SS fighters, and I am going in and I'm playing around with things. Now, before I get into the card build, because somebody's always going to point out every little detail in the comment section, yes, I know that some of these cards are not fully maxed out i only have so much fodder to go around and i still have to budget for characters such as ryu chun li luke etc so i am not fully maxing out everything right now i only have so much to go around okay so with that being said and out of the way we'll talk about the build 
So first and foremost here, we'll talk about, I guess, my transcendent effects. I did get pretty lucky on this one, and I did just go ahead and fully max this one out. So I increased my defense type fighter's darkness damage by 11.8%. So really nice for him. That is something I was really happy to see. These guys here, I'm using this card set right now because I do not have, obviously, if you guys saw my pull video, I do not have the current banner set for Street Fighter V characters, and the set from the Rush Dungeon is basically useless on him. It really doesn't do much of anything for him because it doesn't buff his dots. So in general, I have been trying this one out, and this one overall has been really nice on him for his damage output. There are other sets that I still have yet to test on him. I only have so much time to test these characters in different builds. However, once I get that banner set, if I do end up getting it, knock on wood, hopefully that happens in Saturday Chat and Chill when we pull on banner one, but I have been using this set, and in general, I've been very happy with it. There's probably better sets at this point. I have tried the Seven Night set as well. Um, we can go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So, I have tried the Seven Night set. You guys are going to see, if you don't remember, that this increases his darkness damage by 75% and his active skill damage by 23%. I tried this out. I wasn't as impressed with this set as I was with the current one that I have on him from a damage standpoint. It just wasn't necessarily stacking up as much. Now, I might use this in things such as Expert if I really needed to, but I didn't find it to be anything I was super impressed by, so that's why I ended up sticking with this one here, just based on the numbers I was getting. Once I have more time to sit down with some of these card sets and play around with them, I will test them, but like I said, I get the feeling that that banner set for the Street Fighter V banner is probably going to be one of the top sets for him, if not the top set. So until I get that, I don't feel like I'm going to be able to necessarily get the full breadth of knowledge when it comes to his damage output. But I have been using this one, and overall I feel like this has been pretty strong on him. As far as the transcendental effects I have on these, I don't believe I have anything too crazy for him. This one isn't going to be relevant. Let's see. That one's not relevant. None of these are relevant to him. So none of them are doing anything extra for the transcendental effects. And speaking of not doing anything extra on transcendental effects, uh, these two guys here I don't believe do either. Let me see, yep, nope, and then of course I have this on here. I use this a lot on most characters. I wish I had more of these. I'm sure there's players out there that don't even have it, so if you don't have it, a 1.9% cooldown is really nice. You could use his exclusive option card, and I will talk about that as well, but we'll get there. Now I'm also using this one here, again, don't have any transcendental effect that's exclusive that's going to help him. Um, but overall, this is a really nice set for a character setup for a character like this, I get the feeling. It just seems like this is doing a lot of damage for me on my end, but I am still testing things out. Now, when it comes to other things in here, he does have an exclusive option, and we can go ahead and talk about that real quick. Now, the exclusive option is really nice, but it isn't anything that I feel like I need in some of these other modes. So for instance, increasing his darkness, dam darkness damage dealt by 60% is super good, but at the same time being that he is an SS fighter, unlike characters like Akuma and Ryu, I can go ahead and use cards like this one here, so I almost just would prefer to do that. While these option cards for these characters are really nice, I don't feel like I would really necessarily be using this one that much outside of maybe, again, expert difficulty for the extra darkness damage. I just really don't see myself needing it as much as I would like to have a card like this Kula option card here, because this Kula option is just extremely powerful if you can use it. So in general, that's pretty much what I've got for the build in this video. Again, it's only been 24 hours that I've been able to play with this character, so I am still testing a ton of stuff out. It just tends to be the case that this is the build that I've been using that's been putting up the most damage that I've had so far. So that's pretty much what you're going to see in today's footage, except for in the expert footage where I did go ahead and swap out this guy here, the Gintam option for this guy here. So that's pretty much what you're seeing there. I did not use the Seven Knight set instead of this guy here in that expert run. I just used this one. So keep that in mind. His shield shred already because of his finishers is so good. I don't really necessarily need it that much and I did test them against each other and I was having better luck with this one nine times out of ten. So I've just been sticking with this for now until I can get that banner set for the Seven Knights characters. Or for the Street Fighter characters. Anyway. When it comes to stones, 
Uh, right now, pretty generic stuff. I'm using attack stones from the Street Fighter V collaboration for him for the circle, square, and hexagon slots, so not much to talk about. When it comes to his star and his moonstones, I don't have a perfect stone for a star stone, so I'm just using an attack darkness stone. And then when it comes to this guy here, I actually have a poison stone that is going to be one of the gold moonstones that is going to be double attack. So I did go ahead and get that, so that is really cool for him. In general, not necessarily the perfect build, but we will get there eventually. And in general, I'm pretty happy with what it's doing right now. So that's pretty much going to be that. If you guys want to see my EX core board, this is what I've got right now. So not much to talk about. Pretty much standard fare here for the most part. I have not been able to A5 him yet. I still need one more memory. That has not happened yet. But once I do, I can go ahead and get one of these guys here. But right now, this is what I got. And again, I have plenty of reset kits. So if I need to reset this, I just I can do that. Right now, I'm just kind of testing things out. I'm not really worried about this as much until I get him to A5 and then we'll kind of tinker around with it more. But for now, that is going to be what it's going to be. So in general, when it comes to Bison, some of the things you guys are going to notice is this character, when the dot is applied properly to the boss in Guild Raid, he is going to shred shield like crazy with his finishers. He's also going to have decent shield shred when it comes to just his skill spam. Now, if I had to pick out a particular point about this character that I do not like the most, however, we do have to come back to that core finisher. I told you guys we would, and I do want to talk about it. So the core finisher, you guys will just show you the skill preview so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. But when you use the core finisher, you're basically against things such as your guild bosses that you can't just knock around and push around. Bison is going to position himself at the end of this, pretty much at the opposite end of the screen from the boss. Now this is not necessarily ideal at all whatsoever. The other problem with it is because when he is basically going to the other side of the screen, that tail behind him is going to be where a lot of the damage and a lot of the hits are. And unfortunately, if he is using it and he is somewhere towards the middle of the screen or the opponent is going to be on the opposite side and you leave yourself a bunch of room on the other end of the screen, you're basically going to miss some of that damage. And that is really unfortunate, especially for his shield shred. However, you guys are going to notice in my clips in this video, a lot of the time what I try to do is I try to position myself in a corner against the guild raid boss, because if I do so, and there's not enough room, because there is a nice long tail on this, that is one saving grace to it. Basically, if I'm in a corner, I'm going to get the maximum amount of hits off of it if he is positioned close enough to that corner with me. So you guys will notice that when I go to use this, a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll just dodge to the opposite side of him to put myself in a corner. That way I can get all the hits here. And this does have really nice shield shred if you do that. However, it is very finicky and you have to be pretty particular about where you're going with it. So that is something that is really going to kind of be worth mentioning here and is a really big downside to him. His core finisher is not anywhere near the best in the game and it does leave a lot to be desired. So this is a character that does have quite a bit going for him. I'm very happy with this character for the most part. You know, people again are going to bring up the fact that he doesn't do as much damage as some of these other characters and that is true and that is a warranted critique. However, at the end of the day, this is still a character that is going to be able to put up bonkers numbers by comparison to 99% of the field in this game right now. So really, I don't feel like it is necessarily that big of a deal unless you just want to straight up compare him to all the top tier uber characters that are going to be the best in the game at this point. I really don't feel like that's going to be necessarily anything that should be surprising. You know, at this point, we have so many characters, and the Uber tier list is pretty stacked at this point now that Street Fighter V has dropped. That, you know, if you're not necessarily pushing up against those three or four characters, then yeah, I mean, that's one thing. But at the same time, to be a step below them is still pretty good. So, in general, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and let you enjoy the footage. The last thing I guess I should go ahead and show you guys is my fame, just so that way you know everything. So here is going to be my red fame for him, so that's what we got going on there. So not much else to talk about. But in general, you guys, that is going to be M. Bison. 
I will let you guys enjoy the footage. Let me know in the comments section what you think of him. Again, he is not going to be as high of a damage dealer as some of these other characters, but again, I feel like we're a little bit spoiled. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, these characters are just pure damage nukes, and by comparison to them, he isn't necessarily going to be in the same echelon, but at the same time, he is still going to be doing really, really strong damage. So. Anyway, you guys, that is today's video. I hope you all enjoy this footage. If you do, smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. You all take care. Peace.